All right, let's get on to the fun stuff, milk texturing. In order to produce nice and silky, velvety milk, position the steam wand correctly to get that nice whirlpool happening. And I'll show you ways how to position the steam wand to create that vortex right after. Raw thumb, if for example, depending on the beverage you're making, for example, a cappuccino, you need to aerate the milk more than you would a flat white. Now, aeration sound is often what I refer to, like the kissing sound or the paper tearing sounds. For a cappuccino, you need to aerate it for around three seconds, a latte two seconds, and a flat white one, because it has the most minimal foam. Pour your cold milk straight into the jug. Fill it up only halfway. Or just a little bit over this crevice here. Now we're going to position the steam wand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create milk that will give me a cappuccino. Nestle your steam wand into the spout, submerge and slightly position it to one side of the jug, but not touching it. We're going to turn that on, two full turns. Let's hear out for the aeration sound. If we don't hear the aeration sound, you just need to pull your jug down slightly by the half a centimeter. One, two, three, and up. Once you've applied enough volume to your milk, we just push the milk jug up to bring it up to temperature. Switch it off. We're gonna give it a wipe, push in, and purge. If guys, if you're gauging it with your fingers, it should be one, two, three, out. Temperature we need to look out for is 60, 65. That is the ideal range. If you're new to coffee brewing or barista skills, I will fully recommend you to use a thermometer for consistency. So well textured milk should have no bubbles. It should be nice and shiny, velvety and glossy, which it kind of resembles glossy wet paint. Guys, if you start tapping your jugs, it means you didn't steam your milk correctly because you've got bubbles. Well textured milk shouldn't even need to tap the jug.